Good morning, guys. It's uh, about 5.30 in the morning. I'm gonna eat some breakfast. I know, super crazy breakfast, right? Bacon and eggs, oh wow. Um, but I actually skipped my morning workout this morning. I was just exhausted, did not want to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, so I said, nope, not doing it. Um, but I'm gonna head to work here in a little bit. We are going to do more of the pond work. We got quite a bit more done, actually. So I'll bring you guys with, show you that, and then kind of hook the GoPro up to show you us making the trails and stuff today that we're gonna do because we got all the dirt that we're taking out. We gotta figure out what we're gonna do with it. So we're building some dikes, which are like dams between the two ponds, or the three ponds actually, well two now because we connected to. Anyways, you'll see when we get there. And then we're gonna take that dirt and make trails with it so that we can raise the elevation of the banks a little bit, make it a little bit flatter, easier to walk on, easier to ride four-wheelers, take equipment, maybe even a vehicle, who knows, whatever. So we're gonna go do that today. It's actually at the owner's house because we got done with our job that we had this week uh, three days early because we kicked butt and got it done. So I'm gonna eat some breakfast, head to work, get the GoPro set up for you guys, and I will see you when we get there. All right guys, so we're at work. We've got Sal hooked up with the gravel bucket. We call it Sal. It's a small articulating loader, the Bobcat L28. This thing is sweet. So it's got a super light footprint. It's only about 54 inches wide, but it only weighs about 4,000 pounds. So, it doesn't do anything to the yards. It's got a telescoping boom. They can get into tight places. You can't lift a massive amount. It's a little underpowered, but they did that for emissions. But this thing has saved our backs, knees, shoulders, everything numerous times. We got the GoPro hooked up on it, and we gotta go down and move a little bit of brush right away for the day, and then we're gonna move some dirt around. I'll bring this camera down and show you guys kind of exactly what we've done so far. Adam's already down there clearing the trail out a little bit because this thing, part of it being skinny is it's very tippy. Like, it's been scary a couple of times. But I love this machine. I run this quite a bit, actually. We use it for more stuff than we can imagine. We've got the gravel bucket, forks, a brush cutter, and a bucket for this. And we use it a lot. So we'll head down. It's nice because it's just a little forward and backward pedal, steering wheel. All your hand controls are pilot controls. I love this thing, absolutely love this thing. And it's got a radio. The other Bobcat does it. So I'm gonna be jamming out singing all day long today. We'll head down. I'll show you when we get down there kind of everything that we've got going on already. I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, so just kind of a, show you an example of what we got going on here. This is what we've been digging out. So the pond started down there. It was a tiny little um, dugout area. It wasn't very big. This whole area used to be about a foot and a half to two feet lower. But we dug all this out, all the way through here into that pond. There's a dike right there along the backside that we've smoothed out, cut down some of the trees, and we added dirt all the way up here. We did that so we could drive over there with the four-wheeler, whatever. And then we added all the dirt up here to bring the elevation up, obviously. And then we got the four-wheeler. Yeah, I'm standing on it. Got the four-wheeler. We're gonna drag that, which is that guy right there. That's the drag. It's basically a metal guy with spikes on it. And it's gonna smooth that out, get it all nice and finished. Do like a clover field or something in here, a little food plot. This will obviously all fill up with water. We're in a massive drought right now. That's the only remaining water in here. This whole area used to be underwater. That's why we wanted to dig it out to help and channel the water, to help channel the water and kind of basically bring out the aesthetics of it too. I am gonna drive around and show you guys everything we've done because this is only this side of the dike. So we have the big dike over there and then there's actually another dike on the, the small, or a smaller dike on the other side of that one. And see Adam over there in the bobcat, he's making a road over there right now, using up some of the dirt and sod chunks that we have over there. Because we got a lot of dirt over there too, 
we're gonna help use that to make some of the road and uh, yeah I'll bring you guys over there and you can see I mean obviously the camera flattens this out that's probably four to six feet depending on where you're at like right there is only about two feet deeper or three feet deeper over here is about four feet deeper that spot back in there is about six feet deeper it just it doesn't need to be a perfect elevation we just want to make sure that it held water I almost fell off to, I almost fell off the four-wheeler so we'll drive around and I'll show you guys exactly what we've got going on and uh, what we plan on finishing today and hopefully hopefully get this done today like I said this is the owner's property so this is just kind of for us to do it's a little project that we wanted to get done that we've been kind of neglecting because we've just been busier than crap so it's good for us too it's good training teaching kind of figuring out trial and error type of stuff yeah we'll show you guys around a little bit So this dike actually has a culvert in it already and it goes back into another lowland wetland pond over there. As you can see, it's got trails all over the land here. This is the drag, that's what I was talking about. It's just a mat that lays out flat and it's got spikes on it and it helps degrade all this out. So as you can see everything's banked out and graded out this is about five to six feet lower than what it was plus adding the elevation here so all of this is going to get dragged out and it'll just help make a final finished product it'll just make it look nice and get rid of the big sod clumps and everything like that And then, so this is actually a really cool spot. This right here is about five feet deeper than it was before. We dug it out, we're gonna put a sump in there <clears throat> and run solar power and do irrigation lines all throughout here. Probably just one line, but it's gonna be a drip line. And then that way we can have apple trees in here, we can have clover field, we can have crops that require water and we can control the water because again solar powered we can come out here we can turn it off we can shut it off or turn it on turn it off we can pull the stuff out in the winter which is going to be really nice it's literally just going to be like a 30 gallon basket with a pump in it that drops right into that spot so that's going to be phenomenal for helping the growth out here and the wildlife management that's kind of what we're doing here as jeremy clarkson would put it we're wilding we want to make a nice habitat for them <clears throat> for animals, plants, everything like that. Kind of our way of giving back while maintaining an aesthetic look and benefiting us at the same time. There's Adam right there. Say hi! He's gonna run into me. him waving at me with the bobcat if you didn't figure that out all right we'll go jump over to the other side and i'll show you what's going on over there <clears throat> so, so this is that taller dike that i was showing you the first one that you saw from the other side it's got a nice little trail going through there the other side gets kind of hairy like i wouldn't take uh sal over it it might get a little tippy over -y. but a four-wheeler bobcat yeah just fine And then down in here, this is the lower dike. This is gonna be the one that's more maintainable for vehicles and equipment and things like that. This is what he was just filling out, make it a little more easy for especially Sal to drive over. That's the brush and stuff that we gotta clear out with Sal. We do have a channel dug in here to help with some of the water control and uh, just basically repositioning the water getting it to where we want it to go so that that's the lowland spot we basically made a ditch so that's our lowland spot 
these are our high grounds. We're gonna build a road all along this side. I'll go up and over and I'll show you a little bit more if I can get under this tree without killing myself. Oh boy. Oh boy, am I gonna fit? Just so you guys can see, barely. Barely made it. So there's our ditch. It's to help with the water control. There is another dike back up over here. And that's where we're gonna cross. I mean, we could cross right here. It doesn't really matter. I might as well show you the whole, the whole view. And then we'll cut down all this grass too. We'll keep that grass nice and low. Not, I mean, not like, it's not gonna look like your front yard, but it'll be lower. So there's another little holding pond and that's exactly what that is gonna be, is just a holding pond. As you can see already, the wildlife thrive in there with just that little bit of water. Granted, we've been working on the other side, so we've scared them out of that one for the most part. But that's just gonna be a holding pond with that little ditch channel, basically a flood channel, if you wanna think of it in that sense. And then this is the other dike. Come pop up over this. So dikes are just used for high ground and controlling where you want the water to pool. This is a lowland area over here. It does get wet, it does get filled with water, but again, this year has been crazy dry, so there's not a whole lot of water being held in there. So yeah, this is our little, uh, little wilding project back here. We've got quite a ways further than we were before. And I think uh, I'll switch you guys over to the GoPro. So here's kind of just a, a wide view of everything that we've done. And everything that's dirt will get replanted with something. We haven't figured it out yet. Probably clover because that's gonna be most maintainable out here. You just kind of put it down and let it go. But I'll get you guys switched over to the GoPro that's up on sale. Put this camera away. We'll put this camera away and uh, yeah. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Almost fell off the four wheeler. Yeah, we'll get you switched over to the GoPro on sale. Get some brush moved around. Well, I'd be lying to you if I say there wasn't some sketchy spots there. Whew, we almost tipped over a couple of times. Like, going backwards, because you've got extra weight on the back too, so you back down the hill, and then you stop, and it goes boop, and does a little wheelie. And there was some big stuff, and it's just still uneven ground, so the tires were sinking into areas, and it was sketchy. Like, we got, we lost some guys along the way. We'll pick those up by hand. Otherwise, I mean, we got the brush out. That stuff, there's like little twigs and stuff in there that I'm not too worried about. We'll bury that. We've got our little pile right here. Once winter rolls around, we'll have a nice little fire. Because we're going to clear out these woods and it's going to be the kids' sledding hill. 
Like I said, it's it doesn't look like it, but I mean, it's a steep hill. It's not not very uh, shallow. It, uh, it's got some elevation to it. If you look at it, again, hard to kind of hard to really show you the steepness. So it is what it is. Well, we're done for the day. And man, we got a lot of stuff done. A lot of stuff done. Not quite as far as we wanted to get with the road, but we're not too concerned about that because that's whatever. I mean, we can get equipment through there. Really, the, the toughest spot with the road is this transition right here. We got that flattened out. That's gonna be a lot better for getting equipment down here, just walking down here, skiing down here in the winter, whatever. That transition right there is gonna be way better. As you can see, we got all of that mowed all the way back around the pond, down in the valley, that was all tall swamp grass. No cattails, cause can't, can't cut down cattails. But this gives you a little This gives you a little better picture of the ditch we got going there. Which hopefully, I mean, that'd be cool if it gets filled up with water. It's gonna look nice. It runs all the way back to the pond in the back. And the low land back there that we got mowed down. The nice thing about that, taking the big brush mower back there, is now it's maintainable with just the riding lawnmower. So we have a Toro lawnmower that he uses back here all the time for cutting the trails and stuff like that once they're established. Now we can go back in here and cut that with the Toro lawnmower, which is going to be a lot easier and way faster than coming through here with the brush cutter. So that's the big benefit of getting that all cut down. And it just looks way better. It looks like cut mowed grass. I mean, it looks almost like a yard. But I'm actually not going to walk around because I'm tired and I don't feel like walking. But you can see the trail that goes up there. And the trail that goes underneath the branch goes all the way around that whole grassland area is cut down got the road out there we got the smaller or the lower road the lower dike down here that we're going to use the majority of the time it's way wider it's way flatter and now that we got dirt in there it's going to be 10 times easier to maintain and drive over versus the tall dike that i'm standing on right now i also got all the grass in between the two of them cut down so it just makes it look like a little bit smoother transition and then we got that graded out and we use the drag on the whole thing you can see the bobcat marks obviously but you can kind of see now how we made that a channel that just kind of flows all the way down from this pond to the other pond down there that'll look really nice when it's got water and it's full 
Tomorrow we got to cut down all that grass up on the edge there. Do something with that dirt pile, which we might just kind of leave and spread thin. Use that as our elevation. We're going to cut down all this grass over here. So the reason we cut the grass down too is to help dry out this soil. So the grass is going to help it retain a lot of water and a lot of groundwater. So we cut that down, sun comes on it, gives it more space to air out, lets it air out. And then when we come in and do any type of shift work or changing or planting or anything like that, it just makes it easier to work with because now you're not driving in swampy mud. So that's what we did today. Got quite a bit done. We're, uh, we're really, really happy with this. We're not cutting down any of this grass, I should say that, because that's kind of going to be our swamp land right there. That's what we want to be swamp. So we're not worried about maintaining that. It's kind of a cool little picturesque area, wildlife type area, uh, because there's tons of field mice, shrews, leopard frogs, bullfrogs, all kinds of stuff that are down here. And at least they'll have some tall grass there to go into along with on the other side that we're not probably even going to touch. We might go in there and mow it down just to give a little bit of area mowed down so it's more easily accessible so you can hunt over there, whatever. The other thing we're going to do is set a stand up on this dike or a table or whatever or targets down here and then shoot from that one because it's exactly 100 yards, exactly 100 yards between these two. And then maybe over here there's a little clearing kind of wants to set up maybe a little pistol range something like that but that's all stuff that's yet to come that's that's all future talks we right now it's just getting it cleared getting it looking good getting it easily maintainable instead of having to do this all the time easily maintainable make it look nice give this family a place that is going to stay gorgeous for a long time to come if you guys like these videos let me know if you want to see more of stuff like this when we're out at work the projects that we do out in the woods kind of that wilding type aspect let me know let me know in the comments i love shooting these videos adam actually likes it too because it's cool we get to show people what we do instead of just trying to explain what we do so again if you like the videos comment let me know I'll probably keep them coming, but if you want to see more of it, I can try to focus more on this type of stuff, my day-to-day -day life. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications so you can see when the new videos come out. I, uh, I'm horribly out of breath from walking up the hill. Whew. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I love you. Bye-bye.